I am Jim Collison, and this is Gallup's Called the Coach, recorded on September 23rd, 2021. Called the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches, share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you're listening live, love to have you join us in our chat room on our live page. There's just a link above us there that'll take you to that. Sign in with chat. Well, we, will be, we will be taking your questions live, and we appreciate those. If you have questions after the fact, you can always send us an email. Maybe you're listening to the recorded or the podcast version. You can send us an email, coaching at gallop.com. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app called to Coach. That'll get you there as well. And then on YouTube there, you can search Clifton Strengths and subscribe to that page as well. Angela James is our host today. She works as a senior market workplace consultant at Gallup. And Angela, I've been working for a long time to get you on Call to Coach. Welcome. <laughs> Good to have you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. We have a fabulous guest, and it's been it's been my privilege to get to know her just in the pre-calls, and I'm excited for this interview. Uh, Angela, take a second and introduce our guest today. Absolutely. I am, I can't even tell you, so incredibly delighted to introduce Kate Hogan from Haggerty. She's the Vice President of Training and Team Readiness. Our relationship goes back six, six and a half years now. When I get the opportunity to work with clients globally um, over the last decade here at Gallup, you know, when I think about some of those top five or 10 clients that really come to mind, that's such a pleasure to work with, Kate and her organization is at that top of that list. So welcome, Kate. So excited um, you're here. Thanks, Angela. It's my pleasure. When I think a little bit about your role, within Haggerty. And, you know, I, when I look at some of the background for you specifically, 17 years working internally in the organization and developing um, leadership training and initiatives and strategies to drive your business. What I really want to begin with is understanding a little bit about what drove you to Gallup. Yeah, well, um, We've been working with Gallup for a period of time now, but, um, and as you mentioned, I've been with the organization Haggerty um, really early on in its, um, in its inception. And we um, had the um, fortune in which to really create a, a really unique culture early on in the company and one that was very much um, people focused. And uh, I can say the the founders of Haggerty really early on understood that if you wanted to do exceptional things in business, um, you had to do exceptional things for your people. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that mindset really influenced the culture early on. And so we were beginning to use um, some of uh, Strength Finder with some of our leadership teams in um, for development. Uh, and we also were increasing our, our understanding and, and acumen around what engagement meant to uh, our team members and the organization. And so, of course, we started to learn more about the Q12 question methodology. Um, around this time, we were also on the cusp of some pretty exponential growth for the business. Uh, we were diversifying our products, we were diversifying our clientele, and we were bringing on team members globally. And we knew that um, it was going to be more important than ever to be listening to our people. And so that was really initially what led me to Gallup and to my first initial conversation with you. We wanted to find a partner to help us grow and to help us ensure that our people had what they needed to be motivated and excited to be a part of what we had going on. And so, um, so that's really when we, when we first reached out. You know, when we first chatted, it was interesting for me because I didn't realize from an industry standpoint exactly what Haggerty does. Would you take a little bit of time and talk a little bit about how that fits into you, the people strategy as we go forward? Yeah, so Haggerty is an, it's, we're an automotive company. Uh, we got our start in this industry with our um, insurance product. So it's a really specialized insurance product for collectible vehicles. 
And over the years, as I mentioned, uh, we've really expanded the ways in our reach and our community um, to include all different types of automotive experiences, um, different products, everything from a magazine to um, a product that we have called um, DriveShare, which is a platform in which collector car owners can lease their collector cars to um, individuals for uh, a day or a week. Um, we also have um, products in uh, motorsports and, um, and a variety of different specialized programs, one in which we call Haggerty Drivers Club, which is a membership organization and provides uh, uh, all different kinds of products and services for people who just love cars. I love it. So when we think a little bit about the beginning of our partnership and thinking a little bit about the need as it relates to your culture and the employees and knowing that growth was going to happen. What, how, what were some of those initial things that you did in the beginning around our partnership? So when we decided to incorporate um, initially the Q12 engagement survey, um, we we immediately had, I think, buy-in from our executives and, and stakeholders in the business at a very senior level. But we knew that if this was going to be received and embraced the way we wanted it to be, we were going to have to start with our leaders, our frontline leaders. And so we spent quite a bit of time um, working alongside them and really educating them on the background behind the methodology of the Q12, uh, the things that they did every single day that contributed to some of those most important engagement drivers, and, um, and really the intent of the survey to use the feedback to help the organization grow. And so we really brought them into the process um, and gave them the tools and the knowledge that they needed to be able to uh, explain it to their teams in a really credible, um, impactful way. You're on our Gallup Access technology platform. And so when I think about that original baseline survey, you know, it was very exciting for me to see that you already had an amazing culture. And one of the things that we talk about here at Gallup is it can be just as hard to sustain as it is to increase. So let's talk a little bit about um, how did you really make it your own strategy? How did it really become something that was part of your organization and not just a one-time event? So we, again, we knew we wanted to be listening to our employees on a consistent basis. And so, and we knew that we needed to hear from all voices. And so we initially started a campaign, an internal campaign that uh, was, we termed your voice, our future. And, mm -hmm. um, and so that campaign was really the rally cry to really engage all team members around what our future was gonna look like. And so we're really transparent about our strategy and about company outcomes. And so um, our team members, I think we're all in, right? They all knew that the work that they were doing every single day was contributing to the future of the organization. And that if they cared deeply about the culture that they had created, um, we wanted them to be a part of what that culture was gonna look like in the future. And so we shared that this tool was a way for which them to provide that feedback and insight. And so, um, so we focused more on, you know, the engaging them in creating this strategy for our culture for the future. And, um, and I think that that really, um, uh, helped build just deeper understanding uh, about the involvement that we are looking for um, from each team member and being a part of this. And also translated, um, I remember the first survey that we did, we immediately started looking at each of the questions and translating them into real world work that people were doing every single day that were you know reflected in those questions. Mm -hmm. And so, um, 
And so, and we also told stories, um, real time stories that teams were doing that were impacting overall kind of engagement for their team in the organization. And we're maybe leading the way and creating best practices internally um, so that other areas of the business could learn from them. So just illuminating those success stories, um, taking those questions right back to what um, what was happening on a day-to-day -day business um, basis within the organization and engaging people and helping us create the future for the company. Kate, you, so, you, you mentioned, uh, Angela, one sec, you, you mentioned, I, I can't, I can't skip this because this is really mm -hmm. good. You talk about translating those questions into your own speak or yeah. it, can, I'm sure our coaches are going to ask for an example. Can you think of like, what was the best example you had of that where that really kind of helped fit your culture? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, one of the questions that always stand out to us is I know what's expected of me at work. Mm -hmm. Right. And I always say that's, it's a really complex and deep question because at the surface we think, Oh, well, yeah, of course I know what's expected of me at work, but there are a lot of things that are happening when an organization is changing at a rapid pace that can influence um, how people are perceiving their work or the work that's happening around them. And so um, it's not just about, do I have a job description, right? Mm -hmm. But it's more so of, here's this new thing that's being brought to my team that I'm going to be responsible for um, making um, come alive for the organization, or I'm going to be responsible for uh, communicating this out to our clientele. And so what are the new things that are going to be required of me to be able to do that? And then um, understanding the different areas of the business that we work closely with um, that help us execute on some of those things. And so, um, so we really um, would relate that question back to maybe a specific product launch or uh, maybe new roles within a team that was emerging that impact other people's roles within that team. And, um, and so I think those were the ways that we really started to make some of those questions come to life and create a deeper context to what they meant in the world of Haggerty. I love that. Thank you. It, you know, it's interesting. We've always shared with clients in our partnerships that creating a culture of engagement is not extra work. It is the work. And so identifying those actions and behaviors that you're already doing and correlating them to the questions that were being asked. Um, you know, when I think a little bit about your adoption of this is an entire company initiative, it's not an HR initiative, it's not a manager's responsibilities, um, you really pulling in the entire company, all employees, and really outlining everything that this means to them, that transparency piece that was so important for you early on. And I remember some of our early conversations on how that was important for you. And the leadership truly led by example. I'd love to hear an example of that from you in the very beginning. Yeah. Um, well, I think one of the things when I think about um, transparency in the process um, is we once we did an, our initial um, survey um, and began uh, disseminating specific results to team members or to departments, we then helped coach our leaders to share those results with their teams and also have um, conversations around those results uh, with their team members. And so real conversations. <laughs> and so there's a lot of uh, resources from Gallup that help, um, uh, I like to say that are like second layer questions to the Q12 that really help um, create deeper understanding in the um, perception of, um, of what our team members are thinking about. And so one of the things we did is just how we share these results at a team level. How do we have additional conversations with our leaders that help kind of unearth the things that are happening within their teams that contribute to those scores? And then just having really genuine conversations about what people need to, um, to make things better. Um, and so I think we took, I don't know, the, I guess the fear out of sharing the results yeah. with teams out yeah. of it early on. And um, I think our leaders felt empowered yeah. 
and they felt a deeper level of connection to their teams in the practice of doing that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think that was really important early on. Mm -hmm. When we fast forward a little bit in our partnership and as we really started to see uh, continued sustainability and growth, not only in your engagement scores, but obviously you had just incredible growth internally. Any challenges along the way that come to mind that you quickly were able to overcome or saw them as learning lessons and let's do this differently the next time? Yeah, um, I, I say all the time that engagement is very fluid. And it's something that we're working on, as you said, Angela, every single day. So it's it's the journey's continuous. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can there was um, a period in our high growth in which a segment of our business was really um, being challenged. Um, whether it was from a tools and resources standpoint was an element of it. It was also from a um, a workforce. Um, resource standpoint. And we knew it was impacting people in different ways. Um, but it wasn't until we did um, the survey and got really candid feedback from people around the impact of some of that, that we were able to take action. And so we knew our, peop our people in that segment of the business were feeling the growth. And we knew that they we needed to plan better um, to help them uh, feel successful in roles and give them what they needed to, um, to, to grow and succeed. And so the survey really gave us some, um, some really tangible and really some of it was some quick win stuff that we were able to implement um, to make a difference. Um, one story I have that is, um, some of it was more complex. Obviously, some of it was staffing. Some of it was um, platform enhancements that we needed to make to make their jobs easier. But one of the things that we learned was that um, they didn't like the chairs, right? <laughs> it was like a really, it was, a, 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 it's a simple thing for us. We're like, oh my gosh, look, like three quarters of this team has reference or they're bringing forward like chairs. And so one of the things that we did as an organization is we pulled up a several truckloads um, from our furniture designer at the time. And we um, staged um, ribbons on all of the chairs and the leaders of that team came down and they hand delivered each of the new chairs to the team members with the bow on it. Mm -hmm. um, it was an investment of the organization to purchase the chairs, but it was the act of saying, you know, we heard you <laughs> and, um, and you're important. And this is one thing that we can do. That's a really quick win. Um, and um, and so I remember it um, to this day. It was several years ago, but it was a it was a really cool act. And you know, we told them that we heard you, right? And the survey helped us learn this information, and so we took action on it. So that is such an amazing example of your <laughs> voice, our future, right? Mm -hmm. So when you hear specific stories like that, sometimes and we hear this often at Gallup, it's, it's sometimes it's the most simplistic of things. Yes, it might require an investment. In some cases, it doesn't. That'll have the biggest impact. I love yeah. that story. <laughs> Absolutely. Another really simple implementation that we made that we learned um, during some of our high growth, and this relates back to, um, back to, I know what's expected of me is just the ways in which the tools that we are using to communicate teams strategies um, or team goals. And so we created a document that was um, adapted by each team in a way in which they could, you know, document their teams, you know, quarterly or biannual or annual strategy and that team's milestones and, um, and the goals, um, the quarterly goals that would roll up to that. And um, not only each team would fill this out, and then we would put it in a um, 
you know, a document repository where anybody could access them across the organization and used a way in which to share them pretty fluidly. Um, again, it didn't require a deep investment. It just um, required um, understanding what people needed. Um, and um, it was a really cool, easy template that was adapted and really helped improve people's awareness of what was happening across the organization, what was happening within their teams, uh, especially those that they worked most closely with. So that's another easy example that didn't take necessarily a big investment, um, just a little bit of creativity, ingenuity, and um, consistency across the company. You've got many champions internally, and I've heard that from you along the years. But you know, when I think about some of the biggest impact you've made, I want to talk about your top five strengths. You have empathy, achiever, arranger, activator, strategic. And when we think about your role and truly what you get paid to do, tell me how those top talents over the last 17 years has really helped to drive this initiative. Oh, I, I always say, I'm always thankful I have the balance of empathy and achiever. <laughs> <laughs> and um, empathy is my number one. Yeah. And so I continuously try to put myself in the shoes of each and every employee that works here and try to see um, how they experience the organization and the work that we're doing through their lens. And so I think that that has helped me um, share um, the experience and the voice um, of our employees to our key executives and stakeholders that are creating the strategy for the organization. Um, I am an activator as well, which means I don't like to sit on much for long. Um, and so it also, that strength helps give me a voice and so, um, you know, I think also to um, making sure that whatever we're learning through these surveys, um, that I am incorporating them into the organization's bigger people strategies mm -hmm. and sharing that story um, across the organization whenever I get a chance. So being in learning and being in training, we get a lot of opportunity to be, be in front of people. And so whenever I can, I'm, um, I'm listening and I'm making those connections and, and correlations back to the work that I do every single day. When we think about some of your leadership and, and development strategies you had mentioned earlier, you know, we, we definitely um, have spent the last five decades studying what the best organizations and best managers do differently. And I've seen your organization take advantage a lot of, of many of those resources among, you know, really every single month. I love it when you reach out to me in your emails. Do you have information on this? And ironically, we do. And so, Tell me a little bit about how you've engaged leadership in this ongoing strategy in utilizing the tools and resources as part of our partnership. Yes. Um, well, I think with Gallup Access, it gave access to all of those resources and materials to every leader across the organization. And so when we disseminate um, our engagement results at a team level, um, we use Gallup Access to do that. And so it immediately gets our leaders within that platform. And then they are able to see um, all of the different videos, you know, specific white papers or research uh, or best practices that can help them with their team's unique needs. And so each, um, each time we do the survey, we spend some time up front um, you know, doing some quick tutorials of the platform itself and sharing out any new materials or information that we think might be relevant and timely for them. So it's, um, it's you know, reinforcing the habit of leaders getting into that platform, using it on a daily basis, whether they're looking at their team's strengths or they're, you know, reflecting back on their most recent engagement results. Um, and, um, and so, um, and, and really 
encouraging them to use that tool and those resources in their planning and in their daily leadership. So tell me about how all of this, when we think about the last five years, has truly impacted your business. Um, boy, I think that um, I think that this, these tools, these resources, this survey, and the consistency in which we executed on, has really just allowed us to listen to our employees at some of the most important times of the growth of the business. Um, I remember reaching out to you, Angela, when um, uh, the pandemic hit and we all went work from home. Um, our organization uh, put almost 1,400 people um, working from home in a matter of three days. And, um, and that was an uh, amazing feat and I think really um, exemplifies the people who work for us and our culture as a whole. Mm -hmm. But um, during that time, um, we we were um, trying to decide was it appropriate to do a complete engagement survey um, or was it more appropriate at that time to ask some really specific questions around what people needed in these unprecedented times um, and the and I really and the questions that we asked were really grounded in wellness they were grounded in communication Mm -hmm. and um, and also people's focus and prioritization. And so we we executed it in more so of a pulse survey. Mm -hmm. But the information, the timing that we got back from that survey was critical in understanding what our people needed mm -hmm. over the next the few months that were in front of us um, to stay connected and engaged in, in what we were still trying to move the business forward with. And so, um, so I, you know, that is an, a, that is an example of different ways in which we've used it to help, um, to help the organization at really pivotal times. So let's talk about broader impact on your business. You've had such amazing growth. You were able to retain your employees. And, you know, we will always say it's a best practice never to the delay to listen to your employees or gather feedback, especially in times of change. And nobody could have ever predicted the workday, workplace disruption we had. So overall, when you think about some of the biggest business mm -hmm. outcome metrics, in having the people strategy, having your voice, our future. You know, we are we are definitely the partner in helping you get the right questions and utilize the right questions and take action around specifics. But you had obviously some things internally as a as it relates that was directly impacted. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, well, I think from a bottom line standpoint um, from the business, there's several different metrics that this kind of correlates back to. Um, first is um, uh, we use net promoter score mm -hmm. as a tool in which to measure the level of loyalty of our um, client base or our member base as we reference them. And so uh, we know there's correlation between our employee engagement and our net promoter score. And so uh, we have uh, one of the highest net promoter scores within our industry. And so um, we, um, you know, spend a lot of time tracking the correlation between those two metrics within the business. Um, also, you know, in the past couple of years, we've really um, have grown from a uh, workforce standpoint and, um, and our engagement results have really helped us attract and retain some, um, some key talent. Uh, the war for talent is real. <laughs> And, um, and so, you know, when, uh, when we're recruiting and we're talking to potential um, new team members and, um, and they're asking, they're asking about what is it like to work at Haggerty? Um, and many of them are asking, you know, what is the engagement like to work at Haggerty? And so when we're able to share the story um, and real specific results that are reflected on our company's um, one page plan and our KPIs, um, that, that's, that's, that's a important selling point um, for us when we, when we are, um, 
when we are recruiting. Um, so those are two really key bigger outcome metrics um, that I think have um, have you know where this the engagement overall has really impacted. You talked about strengths early on, and obviously from a Gallup perspective, it, the awareness around us, and then we engaged in the engagement partnership with Gallup Access, and then I, I can remember distinctly I, I had talked to you for many years with the hopes to get you certified. Mm -hmm. And so we had that happen and you've been able to incorporate that even more in your organization. What impact has happened there? Um, strengths is strengths finder has been an important tool for uh, new employees new team members joining the organization. Our workforce is relatively young. And so um, oftentimes these new team members, when they join Haggerty, this might be their first or maybe second professional um, experience that they've ever had. And so, um, and many of them join the organization for the opportunity to grow. They see the opportunity with the um, with the growth of the organization, and so they're joining at they they want to grow um, their career within Haggerty, and so Strength Finder gives them a language in which to talk about um, in which to talk about their strengths, um, and it also gives them a path for um, for development and for career trajectory. And so uh, we say at Haggerty, you know, um, if, you, if you bring your talents here, we will help you develop your best self, right? And that's your whole self. And so we use Strength Finder as a way in which to help people grow and, and develop and, um, and celebrate different people's strengths and uniqueness and leverage them in maybe new ways that they never thought about. Thank you for that. It's, you know, when I think a little bit about some of the conversations we've had over the years, you've had challenges along the way, but one of the things that I remember most about our partnership is that very quickly it was easy for you to identify what that challenge was and immediately get into action. And I know that's your activator yeah. immediately taken off, but you also have strategic. And I think that when in some of the conversations that we've had, we've really thought through what does that look like even from a futuristic standpoint, you've had the opportunity to really embed much of the language around engagement and strengths and culture within your organization where this is a Haggerty strategy strategy. And I talk about this often with clients. This isn't a Gallup program. This is a Haggerty program. That's why I love how you made it your own going back to your voice, our future. So if we think a little bit about the very beginning and if you, if you had the opportunity to go back, and change any of the ways you might have done anything. Any anything come to mind? Um, yes, um, I think one of the things that um, I immediately noticed when we started um, using the engagement survey on a consistent basis is that uh, leaders, especially, really wanted to focus in on score um, and would often. Um, you know, really just the score itself was, you know, this, the, the indicator that they needed to know if their team was doing well, or if there were opportunities um, to make, make changes. And so um, I, I learned that, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the score that matters, but it's, the, the conversation that happens around the results. Mm -hmm. And so good happens um, and change happens when we, when we really start to talk about what these scores mean on a day-to-day -day basis with our teams. Um, or, you know, what does a best friend at work really sound and look like in our team? And really, why is that important? Um, 
And so I think if I was to go back, I would have really put more emphasis on um, more around the conversations and um, and what we're learning along the way than the actual um, the actual score, the result, it's stuff. Mm -hmm. The score will come when we do the work you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, and so I think that was, that was something that we learned, we learned early on. Speaking of the score, I was so very excited. You were right on the cusp a couple years in a row. And then ironically, and it just absolutely amazing. 2020 is one of the worst years that just about every organization could have experienced. And some, some organizations did an incredible job at really maintaining engagement and transparency and communication. And like you said, within three days, 1,400 remote. Um, we had uh, some similar similarity there here at Gallup. Now, I was so very excited and um, for your organization to have been nominated as well as one the Gallup Exceptional Workplace Award in 2020. And just to throw out a few of the numbers, you know, it, you were so close a few years in a row and you started a really great baseline to begin with, but we finally achieved that and you got the award. 75% of your employees engaged, 75%. And you were up at that 77th percentile. We know it takes time. We know it takes, um, everyone's involvement. And so if there was, if you could think of three to four key strategies that really helped you to get there, what would they be? Hmm. Um, well, I think one of the things that we've incorporated into um, our experience or the way we talk about our culture is, um, is this is a growth mindset. Right. And the concept that we are always continuously learning, growing, evolving, making mistakes, and that's part of this journey. And so um, I think using growth mindset as a foundation to um, to our approach towards um, our culture and engagement has been important. And um, and that, again, I keep going back, but the work is never done. Right. And mm -hmm. so um, um, so I think that is has been important for us. Um, I also think um, our strategies around communication and transparency, mm -hmm. um, you know, we um, we share our results broadly. We talk uh, very authentically about the challenges that are happening across the business. And um, and we also talk about it not just in terms of like the business outcomes of engagement, because those are important, um, but also to just people's overall well-being and the experience that they get every day in showing up for this organization. And so I think, um, I think, you know, those two elements have also been important in our success over the years, right? We care about you as people and we spend more time at work than we do uh, with our loved ones sometimes. And so um, we want to ensure that this is the best experience it can be for you and a consistent message and backing it up with action around that, I think has been important. Um, and then also just taking action on people's feedback and drawing connection and correlation to, you know, this is what we heard from you and here's what we're doing about it. Um, we can't solve it all. Um, you know, uh, sometimes there are longer term um, um, themes and opportunities that we are continuously working at. But what we can do is we can say we heard you and we know this is important and why. And here's our first steps in in um, in making this better. Mm -hmm. I think. Please. Please. I was just going to say, I think also, too, is we've really uh, we talk about engagement as everyone's um, everyone's role. So um, we 
we talk about how uh, the impact that we can have as individuals mm -hmm. on um, our overall team's engagement. And it's really a partnership between the organization, between your manager and you. And so when we are talking about whether it's our core values um, or we're talking about, you know, just people's strengths and overall development, we often tie into, um, you know, how you can help contribute to how people are feeling about their work and their experience every day and give um, our individual team members um, resources and tools as well in which to um, take action and make that better. You know, when I, when I, when I look at your website, but more specifically early on in our partnership, one of the things that I saw is that your brand focuses on passion and trust and expertise and community. And I think one of the biggest messages that you shared with me early on as part of this strategy was that you really wanted that message out there that the employees are just as important as the customer. And I truly believe you've lived that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear just really quick, Jim, you have something. I've got one more thing. No, go ahead, do that. And then we'll do some, some questions from yeah. the audience. Yeah. So Kate, I just, you know, this is one of those things that I always love to ask my clients. If you could think about the last two or three weeks of amazing engagement in action, you have one or two examples you could share? Mm, that's a good question. Um, one or two engagement. Even you specifically, not necessarily another leader or team? Yeah, I think um, right now we're continuously evolving the ways that we connect to our teams as we are still pretty dispersed. And so um, I think some things that we've done recently is thinking of new ways in which we can collaborate across the company, um, in particular, bringing leaders together who maybe have not met each other <laughs> because they have joined the organization um, for the most part, virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and so recently creating opportunities to bring cross-functional leaders together to talk about um, best practices and challenges with leading dispersed teams. And so um, I think that is something we've done over the last couple of weeks and are being more intentional and purposeful about. Um, but I think it's um, um, will be something uh, that we'll continue to hone and, and create some best practices around. But I think that would be something. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I will let listeners know if you're listening live, we'll take your questions live if you want to throw them in. Marina had asked one uh, here a few minutes ago around the Q12 and around, especially Q10, right? The question, do I have a you know, best friend at work? Is that, I want to add a little commentary to it, you know, both question three, I get the opportunity to do what I do best every day. And I think Q10 is our strengths related questions. In other words, we know strengths works really well in the context of teams, right? And this best friend question is often is, do I have somebody I can trust on the team or someone close to me or with where I work? So to Marina's question, what are you guys, especially during the pandemic and maybe even coming out of it, mm -hmm. how are you helping those teams gel or at least encourage great relationships on those teams? Mm -hmm. um, we say relationships matter. Mm -hmm. They're very, very, very important. And I go back, I think I mentioned earlier, you know, we spend more time with um, our colleagues at work than we do with our families. And so it's important that we build strong relationships um, within our teams and across the organization. Um, and so um, I also too, you know, we always get questions around that question. And, um, I often have people reflect on, you know, the characteristics of um, strong teams. And so characteristics of strong teams are ones that communicate well, are one that problem solve well, are ones that celebrate together, are ones that share challenges. And so, um, so then I, you know, then create correlation to that. Those are the same types of actions that we might see in um, strong relationships or best friend relationships. And so um, I try to bring connection back to um, um, where we see those demonstrated within a team and the importance of them in, um, in our 
fulfillment in our job and our ability to uh, to work well together. And Micah likes to see on Theme Thursday, you know, strong teams are a talent magnet, mm-hmm. right? They bring, they start attracting others to be, hey, I want to, I want to, <laughs> like, it's cool over there. <laughs> I want, I want more of that team. How do we get more of that kind of work done? So that's exciting to, to see. Um, Mark asked an uh, interesting question. He says, what are the top aha moments for your new employees when they first see and learn their strengths results? So kind of as a coach and thinking about, as they're coming in and seeing this, I'm assuming you're onboarding them with it. Uh, what, what are some of the reactions from some of the new employees, even during this time of COVID? Yeah, I've seen, I personally love the aha moments when someone said, I knew I was good at this, but I never knew someone would really call it out as a strength. And then there's the aha moment. Lots of times we do team building sessions around strengths. When a colleague points out to that team member when they've seen them use that strength in their work and how powerful it is. Um, And you see the light bulbs go off for that team member and like, wow, one, I didn't really realize I was using that strength at that moment. And two, I didn't realize I was having that impact. And so um, I love those moments. I think that that happens a lot. I think also too, um, when I hear and see people using their language of strengths and the ways in communicating the things that they do really, really well, or asking for more work around the things that they do really, really well. So, um, and, and we try to um, um, prepare them and tool them up to be able to ask for that work and create the jobs that they want by using their strengths as a language to talk about it. So it's great to hear. I do this job now because I saw a need and I said, Hey, we could do this. And over the, you know, it's taken a long time to get us there, but it's taken a while. Exciting to hear that you're listening for those clues to talent and then kind of thinking, Hey, wait a minute. I know we hired him to do this, but maybe we could get more out, you know, or we could get higher productivity or greater engagement in that. Angela, I want to put you on the spot for just Mm -hmm. a second and ask you, you've been working with them for a long time Mm -hmm. uh, as, as a consultant and as a guide and as, as a best friend at work uh, to them as well. What are you most proud of is you, you're on the outside looking in, in their organization and you've seen, you get to see their scores and a lot of the things that they do. What, because there's great pride in what we do, right? We just don't Mm -hmm. work with our customers. Right. We take ownership in it. What are you most proud of? You know, for me personally, in the conversations through the years and Kate, we've had so many, I am one of those individuals that likes to put questions out there to help get to self-discovery And I also will, one of the biggest things, especially with, with Haggerty that we thought through is it's, it's not about working on everything at once. It's about, it's about picking one or two items to focus in on. And so I think for me personally, it's helping them think through, I can give best practices and I can share some of the expertise and knowledge that I have around engagement, but how do they internally then socialize that and implement it? And I think what I, the the biggest thing I'm most proud of is they've done it in a way that has just been absolutely sustainable. And I, Kate has shared moments through the years of all of that in action. Yeah. Proud mama mm-hmm. moment. <laughs> no, no, it's it's fun. I think the best part of my job is to sit and hear these stories and then to be able to reflect. And I'm like, yeah, I get to work with a company that encourages other companies to be great. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, that is, mm-hmm. Kate, you were just mentioning, you know, that with the new employees, when they come in, they get an opportunity. You've come to an organization where you get an opportunity to be great at what you're doing. And I, I don't know if that just happens at, 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 at every organization. We're, we're trying to change that, right, in what we do, but mm-hmm. fantastic. Kate, anything else that we might have missed or it's something that you were thinking about like we didn't we didn't mention? Any kind of last thoughts before I have Angela? Thank you for coming on. Any, any final things we might have missed? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think we've covered a lot. I think um, 
I think, as you mentioned, Jim, it's about giving a place, um, creating a place where people want to come and they want to grow and they want to um, reach their highest levels of performance and feel like they're contributing to something bigger than themselves. And so um, that's what we're continuously working towards yeah. at Haggerty. And, um, and so I think, I, you know, Thank Angela for her partnership, and it's been really fun to do this this afternoon, and to reflect back on all the great work and intention that's gone into, you know, what's gotten us to where we are today. For sure, Angela. Let's take a second and thank Kate for coming on. Yeah, you know, not always we don't always get an individual with inside an organization that has the de dedication and passion to drive these kind of initiatives, and so absolutely been a pleasure to work with you over the last six years. And I just want to thank you again so much for participating in our session today. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Kate, it's been from my side, I've just gotten to know you over the last couple of weeks as we've been putting this together. And I was really looking forward to this time uh, uh, with you today. First of all, you guys have a super cool company, like just what you do. <laughs> It's, we didn't even talk about that. I it's, know. It's, uh, you, you mentioned it earlier. It, it, it's super cool. If folks wanted to interact with your organization, what's, is, is the website the best way to do that? What's the, what's the right way for them to see on the outside what you guys are doing on the inside? Yeah, um, definitely. You can go to our website. Um, and um, also we have, um, we're on Instagram as well. So, and we showcase maybe different um, programs or the life of um, a team member at Haggerty. So those are two different um, platforms that we use to kind of share what's happening internally. I think we put a link in the invite, but that's just Haggerty.com, right? That's, Correct. That, okay, perfect. So they can do that. Well, Kate, thanks for coming on and thanks for being a part of this. Uh, with that, I'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources. And Kate did a great job of talking about Gallup Access. Uh, you, you can have, uh, you know, you can see that too. Head out to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. And uh, that'll drop you right into your Strengths dashboard. Lots that we've got lots of resources available that's out there for you. For our organizations that are on our Access platform using engagement, we have even more. So if you have, if you're listening to this from an organizational standpoint, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, more? contact us, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. We'll get you to the right person. Could even be Angela. That would be awesome if you if you, had, <laughs> you were talking to her and we'll get you set up uh, with the right person to talk about that. For coaching, master coaching, or become a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, you can always contact us again, coaching at gallup.com, easy email address to remember. If you want to join us for more of these and you're thinking, oh, I like this, First, we have plenty of them on our website. You can go to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths and click on resources. But you can also join us live, gallup.eventbrite.com. Sign up, follow us there, and you'll get notifications whenever we do a new one of those. Follow us on all social platforms just by searching Clifton Strengths. And we do want to thank you for joining us live today. Quite a few of you out there, and I appreciate you doing that. We'll see you back here with the next one of these. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.